it's a technical title. I should come up with a more appealing title to this. But, but uh, the, the reason I want to talk about this is because uh, I've heard this misunderstanding a few times, you know, that, that people tell me uh, that, you know, if, if all they're doing is renovating the occupant spaces in the building uh, and not touching the mechanical rooms, uh, they, they, they ask, you know, that means that all they have to do for net zero is just upgrade the lighting to LED, right? And that's not quite right. Uh, because, first of all, the, the lighting retrofits actually often increase emissions because the waste energy from the bulbs is uh, actually uh, is actually helping to heat spaces with clean electricity and displace natural gas, at least in smaller buildings. Uh, but the bigger reason is because if if, uh, if you're looking for opportunities to move towards net zero while retrofitting the, the occupied spaces, you should be looking at the thermal distribution system. Uh, so what's a thermal distribution system? Uh, well, it's the network of ducts and pipes that carry the heat away from your heat source and distribute it throughout your building. Most of our buildings are heated with gas-fired rooftop units like the one in, in this diagram here. And there's, they have a forced air system, you know, a fan pushing air through ducts that distributes warm air uh, throughout the building. And that's what keeps us warm in the winter. RTU supply temperatures are typically around 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. And, you know, they cool down as the air, the air cools down as it moves through the ductwork. So what comes out of your diffusers might be around 40 to 50 degrees Celsius once it hits the room. Moving to net zero usually means replacing those gas-fired units with heat pumps. And the heat pumps might be either air source or ground source, but that doesn't particularly matter here. In either case, the supply temperature of the air that, that a heat pump produces is going to be lower than that of a gas-fired unit. Uh, whereas a gas unit was producing air at 50 to 60 degrees Celsius, a heat pump is only going to manage 40 or 50. And that might cool down to 30 degrees by the time it gets to the edges of the building. Now, you can still heat a building with 30 degrees Celsius air. You just need more of it. Uh, now, I, I'm, I'm, I just, just, I'm just uh, throwing up this formula here for those of you who have a bit of technical background and want a reminder, if, uh, if this, is, this is Greek to you, don't worry about it. Uh, but I'm just pointing out that this is basic physics. And this is just saying that when we switch from gas heating to heat pumps, we're roughly going to need to double the amount of airflow that we need in order to get the same amount of heat from a heat pump as we did from natural gas. And twice the airflow means that we're going to need twice the ductwork. So that's something you might want to keep in mind when uh, doing major ceiling work in occupied spaces. The same kind of thing happens with perimeter uh, rads and, and induction units. If, if your building has a boiler, it's probably giving you water around 80 degrees Celsius, and your distribution system will be designed for that. Even if you don't have any heat pumps yet, your boiler could run more efficiently, could run more in a condensing mode if you had more radiators and ran the loop colder. And more modern systems uh, often have this thing called OAT temperature reset uh, that reduces the boiler temperature in the shoulder season to get that extra efficiency when, when, uh, when you don't need as much heating capacity. But, almost, uh, but most radiator systems are sized so that they still need that full 80 degrees Celsius of water on the coldest days of winter. So when we go and replace the boiler with a heat pump, Again, whether it's ground source or air source, uh, or even if it's a special cold weather heat pump, doesn't matter, uh, it won't be able to produce more than uh, hotter water than about 50 or 60 degrees Celsius. And that can still be enough, as long as you have enough radiator area. But if you're retrofitting that into an old building, you may need to double the number of radiators in order for your heat pump to fully heat the building. And you may also need a different kind of radiator to work with those lower water temperatures. Now, I, I don't know if any of you remember this slide, but this is a slide from an old presentation that I gave you about a year ago. Uh, back then, I was explaining the need for a zero carbon transition plan that lays out the order in which you should do the net zero retrofits. 
And here I'm just highlighting where this ductwork and radiator work should fit in. Uh, in most cases, you should be looking at uh, to do your, your uh, distribution loop upgrades after you've done what you can with the building envelope, but before you put in the heat pump. Because your envelope upgrades are going to reduce the, num the number of ducts and radiators that you need, and those distribution upgrades are in turn going to reduce the size of the heat pump that you need. If you do it backward, you also uh, run the risk that your system may not have enough heating capacity in the, colding, in the coldest days of winter in that gap between the heat pump upgrades and the distribution system upgrades. And this is often what gives heat pumps a bad name because the technology is, it's not the technology that's at fault, it's because uh, there are a lot of systems where people uh, have, have uh, out there in the marketplace where people have gone in and done those heat pump upgrades without paying attention to the distribution system upgrades that should be happening at the same time or ideally uh, in advance. What is it that I'd like to take you to take away from this presentation? Um, not the math equation, don't worry about that. Your consultants will take care of that. Uh, but if I had to pick three things that I'd like the people in this group to remember from this presentation is this. First of all, net zero emissions affect the, the office spaces, the occupied spaces too, not just the mechanical room. Uh, in general, you're typically going to need to double the ductwork and double the number of radiators as you move to a heat pump. You might be able to do better than that if you upgrade your envelope first. You know, if you're doing a lot of envelope upgrades, you might not need to expand your ductwork and radiators at all. But if you're doing no envelope upgrades, you're talking about roughly doubling the distribution system. And finally, those distribution loop upgrades should happen before or at the same time as your heat pump upgrades.